Okay, so I've been having some problems with this <clears throat> screencast matic thing because I deleted it by accident last time, couldn't export it or something, then yeah. Anyways, so today I will be giving you a virtual lecture on genetically modified plants and basically how it affects the things around them. And yeah, let's go. Okay, so basically, I'll start off by defining what a GMO is. GMO is a genetically modified organism, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an organism that has DNA that has been tampered with or altered in some type of way. This, like, by organism, they mean anything that's living obviously so things like plants animals even bacteria actually we use bacteria to kind of modify them but yeah we've done some things prokaryotes and stuff but yeah so GMOs actually do include target gene insertions target gene insertion is when you take a gene from one species and you put it in another so a good example of this is when the GFP protein in jellyfish was taken and placed in fish and this GFP, GFP protein actually is what makes jellyfish fluorescent so when they put it in the fish it makes them fluorescent too so it works and now you're probably thinking gee what good is this um, genetically modified stuff like is it actually useful or is it just for fun well we use it in biological and medical research and um, this research is helpful for the study of mechanisms in humans and other diseases or fundamental processes of biology and we also use it for production of pharmaceutical drugs and agriculture which is a really hot topic right now like the little corn I have there <laughs> a lot of corn these days is genetically modified as well as a bunch of other crops and produce like tomatoes I know are really genetically modified um, well, not really. They're just genetically modified pretty often because they do it so that um, they're more resistant to other things like so pests won't eat it or for tomatoes they are genetically modified so that they don't squash as easily so they're a little bit more stiff so they don't so they're not like all bruise when they arrive at the supermarket so it's easier for them to transport them and we talked about corn and its special genetically modifiedness in Doritos and um, other things like I know Dr. Robert said something about Taco Bell and the, like in the corn and the beef and stuff but yeah and um so, a lot of things are genetically modified these days. Oh, and we also use it in experimental medicine, like gene therapy. Okay, so, um, okay, so, outcrossing. Okay, so a way that, a way that genetically modified organisms can kind of transfer their genes to non-genetically modified organisms is if it's in an openly pollinated field where um, outcrossing might occur. So by open pollinated crop, I mean a crop that uses wind animals or insects to carry its pollen from one plant to another. Not like Mendel's pea plants 
that were like self-pollinating, self-fertilizing, and they actually, um, instead of fertilizing itself, they actually go and travel between different plants and fertilize there. So this cross-pollination between same or similar species, not things that are too different, like something like a tree and a flower probably wouldn't um, cross-pollinate well, like it probably wouldn't create a new spawn that's like a tree flower thing with genetically enhanced um, features. That probably wouldn't happen. But something that it's kind of similar, like maybe in recent ancestry, um, they were kind of like the species were kind of related, like a flower and then a flower that sa shares the same grandma as the other flower, but it's kind of different. They could probably share genes and um, create a new one, a new like baby with genetically modified aspects or genes that have been altered. So, yeah, that's how a genetically modified plant can um, pass genes on to a plant that is not genetically modified. So, non pests and GMO, the dangers are not really well known to us right now. We have actually been consuming genetically modified things, mostly produce, for about 15 years without any reported effects. So this doesn't mean that there are no effects. There probably are, or I'm guessing, but it's just that scientists haven't exactly found a link between genetically modified foods and threats in humans. But now people do say that you should take precautions because they're saying that tox that's there are like extra toxins in them or allergens. Actually, the allergen thing has kind of been proven. Like a lot of people are more allergic to genetically modified produce or things than other natural organic produce, and it's. I want to say it's because your body doesn't really recognize the altered, or some people's bodies doesn't recognize the altered DNA as well and kind of sees that as foreign and attacks it. So it actually has caused a lot of new allergies. So someone who's maybe not allergic to kiwi and one thing, like organic kiwi is now allergic to genetically modified kiwi, something like that. Um, as far as coming in contact with the pollen of genetically modified plants, I didn't really find much on that, so I'm going to say that there isn't much of an effect, but since there hasn't been much research done on this, well, there has been a lot of research, but there's not much scientific studies proving anything, um, can't really say for sure, definitely, that it's dangerous or not dangerous. And that goes with non-pest consuming it and coming in contact with the pollen. So this has actually caused quite a problem in the agriculture industry. Uh, I'm going to go back to the outcrossing portion that I just talked about a few minutes ago. Because this outcrossing has actually spread modified genes to weeds. And this made the weeds more resistant to herbicides and pesticides and all that stuff. Um, farmers have actually called this super weeds, and they have been proven to evolve naturally in some parts of the U.S., meaning we didn't plant these genetically modified weeds there. They were kind of just, they came out about from other plants that are genetically modified. So this is not good because it's making farmers return to traditional crop management practices, which is actually quite um, horrible because it's taking them back 20 or more years um, as far as improving these things and making them easier, like farming practices go, and it's harder because they're so resilient and difficult to manage. So it would definitely be a concern. But yeah, so I'm done. Hope 
that this wasn't too hard to follow. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. But, okay, have a good day.